as we continue our sermon series through the Old Testament prophets, we continue our journey with Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a prophet to Judah between the years of 627 and 586 BC. During this time, the society was, was deteriorating economically, politically, spiritually. Wars and captivity dominated the world scene. God's word had been deemed offensive. As you might imagine, it would be very difficult to have been called to be a prophet in these times. Of all the prophets, Jeremiah is the most human of them all. This may be due to the fact that we know more about Jeremiah's past than any of the other prophets. Or perhaps it is simply because Jeremiah is more open with his personal feelings than the others. Nonetheless, the bulk of Jeremiah's preaching came during the reign of Jehoiakim and Zedekiah between the years of 609 and 586. Jeremiah spent his entire life proclaiming the words that God commissioned him to speak. Essentially, Jeremiah's message was very simple. The people of Judah could repent of their sins and postpone the coming judgment of the hand of Babylon. The tragic part of Jeremiah's life is that his very own people looked upon him as a traitor, some of whom plotted and schemed to have him killed. Yet, Jeremiah understood the signs of the time, and Jeremiah understood the nature of God. Jeremiah's message was one of realism and truth in the midst of troubled times. The irony is, is that if the, if the leaders and the people of that time had simply listened to Jeremiah and took heed to his warnings, they could have been saved of all their troubles, or at least from the military conquest. However, the people never learned from their past. They continued in their own ways, even after the second defeat in 586. After this defeat, there were many who continued to plot against Babylon, paying no attention to Jeremiah's warnings. After the revolt, the leaders were forced to flee, to go into Egypt. They forced Jeremiah to go with them. Tradition has it that after reaching Egypt, Jeremiah was stoned to death by his people. Even though Jeremiah spoke the truth his entire life, even though his warnings came to pass and he was affirmed through these instances, he was never appreciated or valued by his people. It is believed that in living in this constant state of rejection, living with the pain that he felt for his people, brought Jeremiah much sorrow, much time of weeping. And it is for this reason that many scholars would refer to Jeremiah as the weeping prophet. So what makes Jeremiah different than the others? We've spent many weeks talking about prophets of the Old Testament. And in a lot of ways, they're all the same, really. They had a message to, to send, to give, to offer to the people of God. Repent. Turn away from your wicked ways. Turn to God who created you. Turn from your wicked ways or judgment is surely coming upon you. In truthfulness, it's a lot of gloom and doom. But what makes Jeremiah different? There are a couple of things. Number one is his call story. I've always enjoyed Jeremiah's call story, which we find in the first chapter, verses 4 through 10. The Lord's word came near to me. Before I created you in the womb, I knew you. 
Before you were born, I set you apart. I made you a prophet to the nations. Ah, Lord God, I said, I do not know how to speak because I am only a child. But the Lord responded, Don't say, I am only a child. Where I send you, you must go. What I tell you, you must say. Don't be afraid of them, because I am with you to rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand, and the Lord touched my mouth and said to me, I'm putting my words in your mouth. This very day I appoint you over nations and empires to dig up and to pull down, to destroy and to demolish, to build and to plant. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I have always enjoyed Jeremiah's call story. I remember being very young and in Sunday school class hearing about Jeremiah and how honest and obedient Jeremiah was, even from the time of his birth. Many of you know my call story, but I think it's important that, that you, you hear it again, as I have always found myself relating to Jeremiah a little bit in the sense that I, too, heard my calling as a young boy. And I remember very clearly and vividly being engaged in a wonderful worship experience with my family one evening. I was five years old. And I tugged on my dad's shirt sleeve, and as he bent down to see what I needed, I asked the question. And I said, Daddy, you know there's Little League baseball and basketball and football, but Daddy, I'm no good at any of these things. Why can't there be Little League preaching? <laughs> I had no idea what that meant at five years old. Truly, I didn't. But I knew at an early age that God was working within me. God's call was pulling me to a life of serving God's people, of sharing God's message, conveying the good news. As I grew older, I continued to, to, to relate to Jeremiah and his childhood calling. But what else, besides the calling, what else makes Jeremiah different than the other prophets? Jeremiah, and I love this, Jeremiah uses throughout his prophetic works object lessons. Again, I revert back to my childhood years in Sunday school, and I remember each week the Sunday school teacher that would come in with object lessons to bring Bible stories to life. Every week she would come in with her bag or her basket, she would sit down and would tell a story with ordinary objects. And I'm convinced as I've grown a little older that even as adults, we still like object lessons. And Jeremiah uses several, but I would like for us to look at four this morning. The first comes from Jeremiah 13, verses 1 through 11. And God tells Jeremiah to go out. <clears throat> to buy a linen garment. And God says, Jeremiah, you go, you buy the garment, wear it for some time without washing it. So Jeremiah did. After some time, God came back and said to Jeremiah, now take the garment off, go down to the Euphrates, and bury the garment. Again, Jeremiah, being obedient, went down to the Euphrates, and he buried this linen garment under a rock. <clears throat> some time passed God came back to Jeremiah and said now go and dig up that garment <clears throat> so Jeremiah goes down he digs up the garment and he finds this weathered and torn piece of clothing maybe insects have eaten it or maybe just the elements have caused it to begin decomposing but it's, it's deteriorated to the fact that, to the point that it's, it's useless. It's no longer a functional piece of clothing. 
And God said, in the same way that this garment has been ruined, I will ruin the pride of Judah and Jerusalem. Instead of listening to me, this wicked people follow their own willful hearts and pursue other gods, worshiping and serving them. They will become like this garment, good for nothing. Just as linen clings to the body, so I created my people to cling to me, declares the Lord. To be my people for my honor, my praise, and my grandeur. But they wouldn't obey. The second lesson comes from Jeremiah 18, verses 1 through 17. God calls Jeremiah and says, Go down to the potter's house. Wait there, and I will give you words to speak. So Jeremiah, he goes down to the potter's house, and he sees there the potter working on the wheel, a piece of clay. And the potter works it in his hands, and he molds it, and he shapes it, and he knows exactly what he wants it to be, and he's working with the clay. But as he's working with the clay, it begins to take a different shape. It becomes flawed, and the vision of what this piece is being created to be is ruined. So the potter takes the clay and he smashes it under his hands on the wheel. And he starts anew. He begins again. And God said, House of Israel, can't I deal with you like this potter? Just as the clay is in the potter's hand, so too are you in mine. At any time I may announce that I will dig up and pull down and destroy a nation or kingdom. But if that nation I warned turns from its evil, then I'll relent and not carry out the harm I intended for it. I may announce that I am going to build up a new nation. I am going to plant a new kingdom. But, on the other hand, if that new nation or that new kingdom disobeys me or turns from me, I will relent and I will not carry out the good things that I have planned. Now, Jeremiah, say to the people of Judah and those living in Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says. I am a potter preparing a disaster for you. I'm working out a plan against you. So each one of you turn from your evil ways. Reform your ways and your actions. But the people said, what's the use? Jeremiah, we will continue in our own ways. We will continue to follow our own willful hearts. We will do it our way. The third lesson comes from Jeremiah 19, verses 1 through 12. God told Jeremiah to go out, purchase a pot. And God said, Jeremiah, go and purchase this ordinary clay pot, but do so in front of the elders of the people and in front of the priests. And Jeremiah, take that pot out to the valley to the entrance, to the gate, and say these words. The Lord of heavenly forces, the God of Israel says, I'm going to bring such disaster upon this place that it will shock all who hear of it. They have turned this place into a shrine for other gods. They have destroyed the original intent for this place and for these people. I will foil the plans of Judah and Jerusalem in this place, and I will have them fail in battle before their enemies, before those who seek their very lives. For generations to come, all who pass by this place will be shocked by the pain that they have experienced. This is what the Lord of heavenly forces says. 
just as one smashed the potter's piece beyond repair, so will I smash the people and this city. The fourth lesson comes from Jeremiah 51, verses 59 through 64. Sariah went to Babylon with Judah's king, Zedekiah, in the fourth year of his rule. Jeremiah wrote down on a single scroll all the events that would happen in Babylon. He wrote down on this scroll all of the things that were going to come as a result of Babylon's actions. Jeremiah gave the scroll to Sariah and says, Take this scroll, and as soon as you reach Babylon, Read every word that is written. When you are finished reading the words on this scroll, tie it to a heavy rock and sink it in the Euphrates River. So Sariah did so. And then Jeremiah instructed him to say, In the same way, Babylon, you will sink and never rise again because of the disaster I am bringing against it. And this, friends, is where the words of Jeremiah end. This has been a rather graphic, rather gloomy foretellings of what was to come for the people of Judah. In essence, this has been mostly bad news. But surely there is some hope in Jeremiah. And in fact, just as in other prophets and prophetic works, indeed there is some hope found in Jeremiah. Jeremiah writes in chapter 31, beginning with verse 31, The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this, this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. What is interesting about Jeremiah is he is one of the few prophets and certainly maybe even the first in that time period that spoke of a Messiah to come, that spoke of a hope for the future in a person who was coming. But Jeremiah knew that the hope of this people, though it was dark and gloomy and the circumstances were grim, Jeremiah knew that there was hope. Hope was around the corner. That hope we know now was found in Jesus the Christ. The same Jesus that you and I find hope in today. It is not always easy to think about our need in the 21st century to turn away from our ways, to examine our hearts, to be made right with God. But our hope is found in the death, dying, and resurrection of Jesus the Christ, who was and is and is to come. This day, friends, as difficult as it may be, I feel like the prophetic words that Jeremiah preached then still applies to you and I today. At times, we need to examine our hearts. We need to seek forgiveness for our sins. We need to turn from our own ways, 
turn to the God that created us to be. The God that knew us and the womb before we were ever born. This morning as we close, I would like to simply read one more time the words of the prayer that we began our worship with today. Give us a pure heart that we may see thee, a humble heart that we may hear thee, a heart of love that we may serve thee, a heart of faith that we may abide in thee. Give us pure hearts this day, O God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.